imagine you're in an intensive care unit and they've got patients that have COVID uh, across the whole floor and you're monitoring each of these patients. That's the situation in hospitals all over the world. Doctors, nurses caring for patients and trying to stop the spread of the virus. When the pandemic hit, Joe Eibel realized he was working on something that could help with both. Anything that we can do to eliminate the risk of infection, the risk of exposure, the risk of transmission are all a, a huge benefit and our technology fits nicely into that. For the past five years, Joe's been working nonstop on a device that fits in the palm of your hand. It seems kind of like something out of Star Trek. It's the uh, world's first wearable and wireless Doppler ultrasound machine. So you just turn the device on. It connects wirelessly via Bluetooth to iPhone, iPad. Joe likes to say that he's replaced one of the main functions of this 300 pound machine with something that weighs almost as much as a watch. It's non-invasive, it's wireless, it's remote. It's got a whole bunch of advantages where you can be actually physically distanced from the patient but still making informed clinical decisions. You can, it's, uh, you know, you don't have to put a catheter or some sort of invasive sensor in, inside the patient's body. The device measures blood flow, an important indicator healthcare workers use to monitor patients. Looks good. Joe explains that right now in hospitals, it takes almost 25 minutes in expert training to get the same results that his patch delivers in an instant. We can track changes in blood flow that give us a sense Joe didn't of get this far alone. He nice started Flowsonics, the company behind the device, with his younger brother, Andrew. We're all in. We've been all in for years. And we're developing a technology that has the potential to help a lot of people um, clinically. And so, you know, we're not going to stop until we get this thing on patients. Full disclosure, this looks like a real hospital room, but it's actually a simulation lab at Health Science North in Sudbury, Ontario. And not only that, but... Can you introduce us to the patient? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is, this, is, uh, this is my mom. And mom, what do, you, what do you think of what your boys are doing? I'm very proud. How come? Well, because I've always wanted them to do something that would make them want to get up in the morning and be happy, be passionate, and that's what they're doing. What, what have you learned about them? How much patience they have, how much determination they have, how hardworking they are. I'm curious what that experience. Andrew explains that getting a new medical device to the marketplace is the hardest thing he's ever done. <laughs> the mountain that you've got to climb to, to get an idea through regulatory and safety into a hospital, then deal with all of the different departments within the hospital and training the staff. Like, it's, it's an epic challenge, and I don't think a lot of people um, would, would take that challenge on if they knew what, what it entails, because it's, it, it's, uh, it's a long road. The brothers hope soon to be able to produce a thousand devices a week. It's good. Good thing, too, as the technology was recently cleared to be used in the United States. Are you proud of it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you get to look at it and say, you know, this is, I, I worked with a team of, of people that, that invented a new technology. It's something that hopefully can become standard of care. You know, we did something that's helping, and that, that's kind of the, the, the end goal for me. COVID has brought death and upheaval to the world, but the fight against it has brought innovations that will change the way we live. Nick Purden, CBC News, Sudbury.